those messages, not just for the information, but um, for sharing your personal perspective as well. And that that's definitely something that is resonating within the community. Great, thank you. All right, looking for any final last thoughts. Um, sort of hard to end on anything but different than that. So uh, why don't we continue on? We're down with the agenda then. Um, so we'll move now to, to our next item, um, 7.02 and approval of the consolidation of the GMHS land tract. So I'm and gonna- Dr. Noonan. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, actually just kind of kick it over to uh, Tricia Minson, but this is a, this is a follow-up to an older uh, item that you all have talked about, but sort of finalizing the consolidation. So Ms. Minson. Good evening. Um, as Dr. Noonan shared, this follows the land exchange with the city from July. Um, the land that the new George Mason High School sits on is currently comprised of three separate plats, parcels A, B, and C. And this deed of consolidation, if approved by the board, would consolidate those into a parcel C1 that would then um, be recorded in the land records and the GMH land would be one solid parcel, which just makes life easier going forward when we're doing easements and other things So you just referenced that one parcel. Are there any questions about um, the deed or the plat which are available on board docs or the motion? Are there any questions from members on this? Seeing a lot of head shaking and uh, other indications that everyone is satisfied with the information. I myself don't have any additional questions. Um, so failing that then, um, we could, I would seek a motion. Unless there's other information um, before we do that. Uh, is there anything else, Ms. Vincent or Dr. Noonan on this one? No, sir. Okay. Uh, then I would seek a motion. Mr. Reitinger. Mr. Reitinger, you're muted. Sorry, um, it's difficult when you've already minimized the window where uh, you can uh, <laughs> unmute. So now let me go back to where I was. Uh, my apologies. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the board approve the deed of consolidation for the George Mason High School land and have the deed recorded in the land records of Arlington, Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Rodinger. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Downs. Ms. Goodell. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Dimmick? Yes. Ms. Downs? Yes. Ms. Litton? Yes. Mr. Reitinger? Yes. Ms. Russell? Yes. And Mr. Webb? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and we will now move on to 7.03, approval of the special education annual plan. And um, I just have to say that due to the nature of my day job, I actually have to uh, step aside from the discussion on this one and, and abstain from a vote. So I'm actually going to just hand the reins off to uh, Ms. Russell to take us through this next item uh, and thank her for uh, flexibility. <laughs> okay, and I believe that the next item, um, that this is going to be a presentation by Ms. Sharp. It is. So I'm going to ask first if uh, Mr. Bates has any lead in comments. Uh, otherwise, we can just turn it over to um, Ms. Sharp for her presentation. No, Ms. Sharp is so thorough and knows so much about special ed and has done so much to lead the special education effort. So we'll just turn it right over to her. All right. COVID, Empress of COVID, you are on. Okay, well, good evening. It's nice to finally actually be able to be in front of you about, about special ed. Uh, you know, my last few visits have been around COVID and the student services portion of my job. So tonight I'm here to share with you our local special ed annual plan for our IDEA funds, which are our Part B dollars that flow through from the federal government to our school division. It's a requirement that this information gets presented to the board and accepted by the board in order for us to submit our plan to VDOE. And in the plan, there are several components. Um, the first few um, sections of the plan really are more the procedural pieces where Dr. Noonan certifies 
um, several different things. We have some policy statements, statements of assurances, but the big piece and the big idea behind the plan is that we share a review of what we did the previous year with our IDEA dollars, and then what our plan is for the upcoming school year with our IDEA dollars. And then we talk a little bit about some of the other pieces in terms of some of the special services that we provide in special education. Um, if you wanna to move to the next slide, that'd be great. So the, the sections that really are more of those policy pieces are that Dr. Noonan certifies that um, through this plan that we will use our, uh, basically use our IDEA dollars in accordance with um, federal um, regulations under IDEA. We also have policy students that, um, statements in place to make sure that we acknowledge and assure that we're providing FAPE, that we're um, acting in accordance um, as an LEA and following all the procedural safeguards that are in place for parents and other pieces. And then we do a statement of assurances that we will meet all the requirements of being an, an LEA and implementing um, special education services in our division. The other piece of data that I always share each year when I do this plan with you is our December 1 child count. So that um, I think it helps folks understand this is where our IDEA funds are generated. So we look at our the federal government looks at our December 1 child count that gets submitted and every school division across the United States is required on December 1 to count their students with IEPs. And we look at the count in terms of across disabilities and then our overall count. And then one of the pieces that you'll see here is that we had a um, about a 12 student drop in our um, students identified with having an IEP. And if um, you wanna go ahead and move to the next slide. The next piece of the um, plan that we look at is we make assurances that we don't have any barriers in our school division, that we have policies in place that protect for equity and gender, race, disability, and age. And we have all of those in place to make sure that there are no barriers to students receiving special education services. Another component that we're required to address is um, providing special education to students in any local or regional um, jails or detention centers that would be located in our geographic boundaries. We have none, so that's a, a piece. The um, big um, piece of what we provide under our IDEA services, we 100% use all of our IDEA dollars in Falls Church to fund teacher positions. We pay for Four point, um, last year we paid for 4.2 um, special education teaching positions. That's the salary and benefits for those special ed teachers for with our preschool funding from IDEA, um, which you can see on the slide is, uh, isn't is a whole lot, but it does um, fund 0.125 of a special ed teacher at JTP um, to work with our students. We focus on teaching salaries with our IDEA money because we know teachers make the difference. And um, we focus on smaller caseloads for our teachers. Our special education um, students really get the personalized instruction and to really focus on their individualized needs. And we can do deeper learning when we have smaller teacher-student ratios. So we focus all of our IDEA dollars on teaching and teachers. The next piece that we're required to address in our plan is our maintenance of effort. So we have to basically, we have to certify that as a division that our contributions, our state and local contributions towards special education can't decrease, that we have to maintain our, our continual effort. And so we certify that and Kristen works um, with me on that portion of the plan. The next piece of the plan that we have is we have to address coordinated early intervening services. And under IDEA, there is a requirement that if a school district is found to be disproportionate 
in the representation of minority groups in special education overall or in specific disability areas, if you are found to be significantly disproportionate, you're required to do a 15% set aside of your IDEA funds, and that has to go to intervention services. In our school division, this is not required for us because we are not significantly disproportionate um, in special ed overall or in specific um, disability groups to meet the threshold for coordinated early intervening services. The other piece that we have to address in this plan is how do we utilize our proportional set aside funds and every school division is required to utilize a portion of their funds to provide services in some manner to any students who are parentally placed in a private school. And with that's within your boundaries. And so we um, utilize those funds by providing speech therapy and occupational therapy services for um, some of our students who might who are parentally placed in private school. And then the next um, piece of the plan is that we talk about what we're going to do with the money for 2021. And so you can see, um, if you look on there, our 611, which are school age funds, will fund 4.5 special education teaching positions. And then our 619, which are our, our preschool funds, will again um, fund 0.125 of a special education teacher. I guess we're going to have to ask Ms. Baruti which arm of a teacher that's going to, that we're actually paying for over there. So, um, and again, our focus remains on small caseloads for our special education teachers so that we can really provide those more intensive services for our students. And it brings me to a conclusion and we have to share our timeline with you. So we started collaborating and planning on, um, on this plan May 1st. Yesterday I emailed, um, we're typically required to share this plan with our special education advisory committee, but because our advisory committees aren't meeting right now because of COVID, I went ahead and shared this slideshow, a slide presentation with them and an outline of what we're doing with the plan. Um, Jenny York, who is the chair of our um, SPED advisory committee, sent that out to all the members. So they received it. And then the next piece of the timeline is for the board to approve and take action and say that they approve our plan so that we can submit it electronically to VDOE on behalf of the school division. And that is the conclusion. And I always like coming to do this plan because it marks my anniversary of being here in Falls Church. And so this is my, this kind of marks my two year, two year anniversary because I, I think I moved here on a Sunday night and then started work Monday morning. And then like a week later, I was in front of you guys presenting. So I don't even think I'd unpacked before I was, I was here sharing the special and the annual plan. So I always like coming to do this one for you because it marks, you know, my time here. Uh, Mr. Anderson, can I uh, add something very quickly before there, if there are any questions? I don't know if he's there, but yes, you uh, may. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Russell>. <laughs> Ms. Russell, sorry, Ms. Russell, is it okay? I, yeah, um, I, I would just uh, add a couple of things for further context. Um, one is, you know, certainly um, kudos to Rebecca and her team for doing a great job um, working through special ed. And I know Seamus O'Connor has, has been a huge uh, right hand person for, for Rebecca as well. But when you look at the number of dollars that we're receiving from the federal government to support our special ed programs, um, rest assured that we have more than 4.5 special ed teachers in the Baltimore City Public School System. And that those monies are coming from local dollars. So when somebody says, well, you get all this federal money to support your special education program, it pays for um, really less than almost 10% of what our overall program costs are. So, so that's why um, I was trying to advocate um, in the last round of CARES funding that we actually look at our special ed uh, population to distribute CARES money as opposed to our Title I because that money would really support more students um, who oftentimes have uh, multiple impacts as well. So 
anyway, I just share that for context um, because we really don't get a whole lot of in, a whole lot of money from the federal government for special education. So um, thanks, Dr. Noonan, and thank you, Rebecca. Um, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I just think we are so fortunate to have you in our division and just the work that you do, whether it be COVID or with regard to the special education population. Um, 